Hi, this is Lauren from Lemon Sky Photography, LSP Actions, and today I'm going to show you how to composite a newborn and a prop that you've shot in your studio. We end up having to do this quite a lot because if baby's really comfortable on the beanbag, I'm more than happy to shoot the prop on its own um, after the session just to save time for the parents because if you've got baby in a lovely little tushy up position on the beanbag for example that would be perfect for the prop um, what's the sense in then disturbing the baby to position them on the prop um, and putting more time onto your session and also disturbing baby um, which we don't want to do so this little guy was very happy in this position um, and then we shot the prop separately what I also did with this prop, because it scales, is in one of the shots I put my hand on top and pushed down until the scales moved around to baby's birth weights, um, which is really lovely. But for today, I'm just going to be using this shot to show you the technicalities of doing this. So first, I'll take patch tool to select. You could use magic wand, um, sorry, lasso, but I prefer to keep this on um, the straight line lasso. So patch tool can also double up as a selection. So select the baby, hold down control or command if you're on a Mac, control if you're on a PC, and C to copy. Back here, hold down control or command and V to paste. So now we have your baby above the background layer. Hold down control T, which brings up the transform. Hold down shift to keep the image looking uh, the same ratio as you resize. And just bring it down to a very rough size to where you want the baby. The most important thing with any kind of composite with a digital background, whether it's a background you shot yourself, which I'd really recommend um, because you know that your white balance, your light, your depth of field, your settings, your light, everything will be the same. Um, but even if it's one you've bought, the most important thing is making sure the light is coming from the same direction in the image. So if I just hit enter, and uh, make that invisible for a moment. You can see the light is coming from here, so I had the light to camera left. Same with baby, the light is coming from here. If the light was coming, say, baby was the other way, that would instantly not be very realistic because um, you can see the two different light sources and that's really important if you buy a digital backdrop from say Etsy or somewhere else, make sure your light is coming from the same way, even if you have to flip baby. So, I will roughly place baby there. If you're struggling with how baby should look, bring the opacity down on your baby layer. Control T to transform again, and then you can see where baby is sitting on that image. What I tend to do as well, um, which I might do in a moment, is puppet walk baby a little bit if they're not quite fitting in with how they need to look here. So edit, make a copy actually first, just so you can go back. Edit, Puppet Warp. Now I don't I don't show mesh, but just for um, this tutorial I will. I normally go on to oh, more points, and I'll pop pins down the middle of baby because I want to lift the bottom or the head up. If I'm happy with where the head is, which I am, I will pop more pins around baby just to um, secure that head down because we don't want to walk baby's head if possible. So pop a load of pins there. What I'll do now, you can see the mesh, is I will hide the mesh and keep popping these pins on. Now I'm going to take baby's bottom and we can see that the blanket comes down here. So I just want to lift baby's bottom up just a little bit, just so baby fits this natural curve of the prop. Hit enter. There, and you can see that still looks very natural but more natural than the original with the line of the prop. So the next thing I'm going to do is get rid of all this background around baby and to do that I'm going to use magic wand tool um, but you want to hit the quick selection tool. Drag it around the baby just very roughly this might happen it might select everything if the colour is very similar so then you want to hold down alt. I'm now holding down alt on my keyboard and this will take away certain parts of the selection. If you want to add to the selection, you can hold down shift. Shift means add, alt means take away. Now I'm not too fussed about the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is hold down shift and add in selection just around baby's skin. 
and hairline. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want most of baby selected. You can always finish this off um, by hand afterwards. And then I'm going to hit refine edge. And you will see now the selection is baby and the background that is not selected has gone white. So hit the brush and just stroke it around baby's head just to bring out some of the hair details. And hit OK. Now we have baby selected, add a mask. As you can see, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. I've managed to cut off some of baby's ear. So I'm going to hit my brush tool on 100% and just lightly stroke baby's ear back in. I can hit X to change the colour to black and erase if I wanted to. So I'm just going to stroke in a little bit as well on a low opacity brush around baby's head. Because the backgrounds are brown, it doesn't actually make too much of a difference. And what I can do if more texture shows through is just delete it again. So I'm just going to slightly stroke this here just to give baby a bit of a softer appearance so we don't get that ultra cut out look um, that you can get when compositing. I'm going to keep most of the original blanket underneath baby because otherwise it would look super fake. And what I'm going to do is just delete this around here. I'll fix the colour in a minute. Bring the opacity up 100%. So you can see that we have a little bit of background showing through here that I'm just going to bring down a bit. There. So now baby is on the prop. When I composite, I'll do the compositing first before anything else. Of course, you adjust the white balance, get the colours right, get the colours working, but don't worry about um, skin smoothing, your editing, your colours or anything like that because you want baby to be as organic as possible as they were in the shop before you then move on to the rest of your editing. So you could soften baby even more if you wanted to by just stroking this around. Because I use the same blanket and the same lighting and the same everything, baby is quite realistic on that prop. You could also tweak the transforming of baby if you wanted to, just to really line them up with the way the prop is laying. I may just puppet walk baby just a little bit more. Puppet warp is a very powerful tool. If you've not used it, have a play. It takes a bit of getting used to, but it's really good. Obviously, this is a live edit. I've gone in blind to edit this one, so you will have to excuse me playing with things, but that's Photoshop for you. Okay. So, yeah, those are the things you could do. So now I'm going to work on the, um, the colours and the white balance. And to do that, I'm going to use my actions. But of course, you don't have to. You could use um, any actions you wanted to. You could use your own hand edits, your own editing style that suits your images. So there are my actions. I am going to make Brighten Up Baby invisible and make it visible just on the baby because I want this scene to be quite dark. I am also going to give Warm Skin Tone a mask because for this image, I again want that just to show on the baby. So these actions are good because they're very, very customizable. Reduce the reds. I am going to drag that over baby's feet, the bottom, just a little bit. If the effect is too much, you can then go into opacity and bring it down until you're happy because obviously it depends entirely on your image how much of the effect you want to show. Soft skin, I'm going to run a little bit of that over. 
bring back the details. I love bringing back the details in little creases, toes, lips and eyes. So this is where you want the parent's eyes to look. Cheeks and lips, this will add just a little bit more colour to his lips and cheeks. Again, if the effect is too intense, you can turn the opacity down on the layer. Okay, paint away the yellow. Yeah, we do have a little bit of yellow around here. Okay, now I'm going to flatten the image. I'm going to make a duplicate of the image. And then I am going to, obviously, I'm doing this quite quickly um, just to show you how it's done. If this was your image, you would want to spend a bit more time cleaning it up, making sure baby lined up properly, making sure everything worked. Sometimes going to get a cup of tea, stepping away from it, coming back, and you can see something really obvious that you don't necessarily see um, straight away when editing baby. For example, oh, I didn't see this bit here, and normally I would not have flattened my image, so I could have gone back and changed that. So for now, I'm just going to stamp a little bit of this background in, just to meet baby's head there. Okay. So yeah, I quite like the way that looks. And now I can play any of my other... Um, layers just to finish it off. What I would normally probably do is go into Lightroom um, as well to finish this one off um, because I tend to work in tandem with Lightshop, um, Lightshop and Photo Room? Photoshop and Lightroom at the same time so I would have gone in and tweaked more of the exposure and come back but just for Photoshop's sake um, we will play like this today. So I want this image to look nice and warm and cosy and dark. And take the reds down just a little bit more on um, that bit there on baby's body. And here. Anywhere else where we can see redness and spots. Okay. Put the warmth down a bit. That's the beauty of this, because they're all on separate layers, you can play. If you add something and it looks good, then you add something else and it renders your original thing you added um, not so good, you can go back and change it. So I wouldn't advise flattening as much as I am. So I'm going to use Patch Tool to clear this bit up. As I said before, I always use Patch to make a selection, because in Photoshop a selection is a selection, whether you do it with Marquee, whether you do it with Lasso, whether you do it with Patch, it's the same thing. Um, and then I'm going to go on Content Aware Fill and play that just to remove that little bit there. Any other little bits you want to remove? Um, bits that are sticking out, for example, bits that don't look good. Hold down Shift and you can make multiple selections. And then you can play Content Aware and it will remove those bits. So I'm going to use Content Aware on this little patch on his bottom. Small areas it might not work, if it doesn't you can just undo it or because you're already on patch drag it into a bit that you think will work. And obviously I'll spend a bit more time cleaning up his purple feet and cleaning up any little spots and wrinkles but on the whole I am quite happy with that. So I hope that helped and uh, yeah have fun compositing. Bye!